And I will now turn to Senator Rounds for five minutes of questioning. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, and look, for, first of all, let me just say thanks to Ms. Vogel for uh, taking the time to, to speak with us today as well as our other two panelists. Um, it, your information is critical that we share it and, and that we look at ways to improve housing across this country for those individuals that uh, simply don't have other alternatives. Uh, Ms. Vogel, I'd, I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to, to join us all the way from uh, Eagle Butte in South Dakota. You may be familiar with a member of my personal staff, Kyle Chase, who is also an enrolled member of the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. He's also my chief legal counsel, and um, uh, he's been a, a real asset in terms of providing us with additional information about working through some of these issues. But I want to begin by inquiring as to the unique vulnerabilities that Native American communities face when it comes to housing safety. Um, Ms. Vogel, can, can you expand on the specific housing safety issues facing tribes today and how those issues differ from off-reservation public housing? Thank you for that question, Senator Rounds. Um, the unique um, ch threats that are uh, facing our um, our, the safety of our families is, of course, one, the rural isolation of our communities, the response time for any first responders, you know, not having um, uh, fire fighting equipment uh, stationed locally. Um, that's one. Another is the um, meth contamination of our units. Um, we have uh, an epidemic of meth use in our uh, tribal communities and the um, residual um, um, effects of the use of meth in our homes leaves our elders and our young children, uh, those with uh, um, compromised health conditions in very vulnerable positions. That is also a big concern of ours. Um, others is, you know, that the um, overcrowding creates um, a lot of stress on the house, um, mold, is a problem, you know, from just all the moisture in the house and not having proper ventilation, um, you know, the the heat, lack of uh, heating and upgrades to keep up with um, with the demand. You know, we uh, we face you know uh, serious problems with uh, heating and cooling costs, uh, making you know families choose between you know do I pay my light bill, do I pay my a heating bill or you know do I buy groceries so there's a lot of stresses because of the threats that uh, face our families to ensure and, and that aren't the same as what the others testified there isn't an, um, enough money to address every threat and so we too have to prioritize thank you Ms. Vogel thanks for that and I, I'd like to follow up a little bit you you indicated earlier that uh, Chair Smith and I have um, promoted the re the reauthorization of Nahasda. And uh, part of that is, is the, uh, it reinstates the HUD drug elimination program. I, I am curious, I, sometimes I don't think folks realize what an impact uh, a meth house is or what, what impacts that has in terms of getting somebody new into a home that's has had meth in the past. Could you talk just a little bit about what it takes to rehab a home where meth has been a problem? Yes, that that is an that has been an increasing cost. Um, you know, when we discover when a fam when we have a, a vacant unit, we test that unit to see if it's uh, test positive for meth. So, if it tastes positive for meth, then it's the cleanup cost, the remediation before we can even start to address the um, rehabilitation of it. But the condition of the homes that when there is meth use and um, the behaviors of the tenants themselves is there's a lot of tenant damage to the unit. And so, you know, we have gone in to where we've had to strip the sheetrock down and because of holes in the walls, we find dirty needles behind the, the sheetrock. And so we have to be very careful in, in removing things. Um, doors are, are missing, uh, there's broken windows. So the there's just structural damage to the unit. So, you know, when we go in, we have to replace cabinets, we have to replace vanities, um, doors, we have to resheet rock. There's just an extensive a lot of damage, unfortunately, because of the drug use and the, and the behaviors, violent behaviors that come with that. So we uh, always have um, catch up. 
So we try to do as many as we can, you know, throughout the year, but at the end of the fiscal year, we're carrying vacant units into the next year. Thank you for that. And I, my time has expired, but I think you lay out some of the additional costs that maybe a lot of folks out there aren't aware of that go into trying to rehab a home that in the past worked, but with uh, someone on meth or using meth in that home, the type of damage that it does to the home and what it takes to, to get it all put back together. Thank you very much for participating this afternoon.